Hey there, welcome to day 44 of our BU 365 day challenge, our annual challenge to do one thing every day, a little thing every day, a single daily action that improves us in some way, shape or form. Our first segment, we focused on the physical area and aspects of our life. This segment, we are focusing on the emotional. We skip to emotional. You don't have to focus on any area or aspect of your life in any particular order. It's what's going on with you that's important. But in order to make this a little bit more structured, I decided we would take the life framework, which is physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationships, contribution, and I added confidence and communication last year. Obviously, I need to work on communication still. <clears throat> but those nine areas and aspects of our life, and there's all different life frameworks. You pick the one that feels right and feels best for you. My hypnotist, Victoria Gallagher, has a different framework that she uses. She has six areas. Uh, just about every guru I can think of has a framework that they use where they analyze and they look at their life. Uh, my friend Jennifer has her own. Everybody I can think of has a framework that they use, and that's their frame of reference for considering the different areas and aspects of, of their life. So I use this one, and that's what this challenge will be based on, but you can tweak it and change it in any way you need to that works for you, just like our topic today. Today we are going to talk about your emotional core values, my emotional core values. What are core values? Core values are those things that we believe and hold so dear that they help to guide our decisions and our choices. They help us to know where to draw that line in the sand in terms of yes, we'll do this or no, we're not. They actually make decision making really, really easy because we know what is and isn't for us. And how do we come up with what our core values are? How they make us feel. So I could read you a big old list of core values. I've done this exercise several times before. All I did was Google core values and you get people's top seven, you get other lists of entrepreneurs or successful business owners or uh, leaders or however you want to search it out. You can find out what other people's core values are. But again, it doesn't matter what works for other people, it matters what works for you. Now there's a process that I like to use. It's really a simple six step process for identifying your core values. If you've never done this exercise before, and believe it or not, the vast majority of people on the planet have not ever sat down and consciously thought about what they believe in, what their core values are. So if you've never done it, you'll be surprised how powerful an exercise this is. First thing you want to do is just write down off the top of your head what things are important to you, what things make you feel good. For me, love is always at the top of the list. I don't know about you, but love makes me feel good. Loving my kids, being loved by my kids, my grandkids, uh, my sisters, my, you know, my siblings, my parents, my grandparents when they were alive. Love is just something that's always been central to my being. So that's an easy one. But there's all different core values. Just Google it if you're having a hard time coming up with a list. It's kind of like when you're doing your resume and you need action verbs to put in your resume. You go up and you look up a list of action verbs. The, the internet's a very powerful, fun thing now because we have information and more than we could ever use at our fingertips. So we want to identify what are our top core emotional values. Uh, the second step, whoop, I'm throwing stuff around, no idea what it is. Looks like an old calendar. The second step is to consider the people that you admire and what their emotional core values are. What emotions do they comfortably exhibit and show? Maybe authenticity or, or telling it like it really is is super important to you and, and people that you admire. You find that the people that you follow on social media, the people that you listen to uh, in, your, in your work or business life are those that are... They, they have a, a ring of authenticity and truth and really being who they are. That would be another one for me. Be yourself. And I don't use the word authentic so much. It's just be you. Be yourself. So love and be you are probably my top two so far. Um, uh, number three, consider your experiences. What past experiences have you had and how have they impacted what's important to you? A lot of times we have big lessons or big challenges in our life and overcoming them teaches us a lot about ourselves and what's important to us. Uh, resilience, not quitting, you know, um, always persevering. That might be something that's one of your core values. Um, showing up, being consistent, whatever it is for you, you want to identify emotionally. How do those things make you feel? Thirdly, consider, oh, fourth, consider and take those and, and categorize them. Normally when I'm doing this exercise, we're talking about 
all of our basic core values for every area and aspect of our life. So what are our overall core values? And we would like to group them and segment them. And I actually group mine by where they fit into the life framework, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships, contribution, communication, and confidence. And of course, we're focusing on emotion this particular time through this process. And I, and so look for the central themes in the things that you write down with respect to your emotional core values. Then choose your top ones. And what I like to do, finally, the sixth step is to choose your top core values. And what we're gonna do today for our action is we're gonna share three, your three top core emotional values. I guess mine are love, be yourself, be me. I, I say be me, but you would say, you know, be me or be you. I say be you if I'm talking to you. And what would be my third top one? I'll have to work on that today. I'm not sure because, you know, I have a lot of them. I probably get gratitude, maybe appreciation. I, I One of those. So our action item today is to do that. Now, I said yesterday that I would share a tool that guarantees you can make it almost impossible to feel the negative emotions, a negative emotion that you don't want to feel. And I actually did this yesterday. I ran through... And I did the exercise on fear. And all you do is you define fear or anger or hatred or jealousy or any other emotion that you don't want to feel anymore. Um, I, I did it for jealousy a long time ago because I'm like, why would I want to feel jealous ever of anyone, right? I want to support people in their achievements and, and feel good about them. Because if I feel good about other people's achievements, I will feel good about my own achievements. So... I did this with fear and all you do is you think of the most impossible things that have to happen in order you, for you to feel fear and you connect them. You use the, the three letter word and as a connector. This is a, a long standing NLP neuro linguistic programming strategy or tool that uh, anybody can use any time to create what we want, right? The, the whole concept of neuro-linguistic programming is the power of words and language and how we use it to quickly and easily change and transform our lives. So if I wanna make fear almost impossible to experience, I'm gonna connect a whole bunch of things that all have to happen simultaneously or for a long period of time in order for me to experience fear. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. <clears throat> Um, for me, fear used to be pretty easy to feel, right? If I was scared or surprised, or if I was outside of my comfort zone, to me, I would identify that as fear. But I, I didn't want that. I wanted to be able to take small risks. And, you know, the truth is most of the fears that we feel as human beings today are artificial or made up, or they're based on beliefs or scare tactics of, of other people or other things that are trying to influence us. <laughs> Remember thinking, I used to be afraid I'd lose my job, right? Had little kids at home. Um, and I don't know why I was afraid I'd lose my job, but probably because I'd, I'd gotten fired from a job before. So I was afraid. I always had this little fear niggling at me that I was going to lose my job, which was a totally rational fear. Like most of our fears are. So how do we take fear and redefine it for ourselves so that we only feel it if we're being chased by a bear or if we're literally being held at gunpoint or knife point or we're in a really scary situation where we need our conscious mind to kick in and that old fight and flight mentality to, to take hold of us. But otherwise, if it's picking up the phone and calling a prospect in our business, if it's asking our boss for a raise, we don't want to have the same type of fear in that situation as we do in being chased by a tiger, right? So I like to take and define fear and all the other emotions for myself. The positive ones, I connect with or so it's easy to experience them. The negative ones, the ones I don't want to experience very often, I make a huge definition and connect it with and. So here's a couple of examples. Um, to experience fear now, I have to be in a high alert stress situation in all areas and aspects of my life at least 50 times a day for a minimum of 90 days or no, no, no. And I, I messed it up in my brain and without ever knowing what to do, having no idea for about anything in my life for three weeks 
and no one is able to help me or or direct me or solve my problem and I have to da 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 I didn't do a very good job sharing that example I did it yesterday let me see if I did more more on the next page because it was basically yep I did and no one can help me in any way and no one will do anything to make me feel better or less stressed or myself to feel less scared or and I, I can't do anything to make myself feel less scared so that means and then it goes on and on and on with all the ands then I could experience fear outside of being chased by a tiger right so I'm gonna define fear so that it is actually impossible for me to get there and experience this. I did this with depression in my 20s and it was first when I first started to learn about a little bit about neuro-linguistic programming and I don't know a lot about it, but I've, I've looked at it enough to take the tools out that work for me and apply them in my life. I did this with depression. I did it with, um, obviously I, I did it with parts of fear, but not with all types of fear, um, but it's a good example. I did it with frustration, but the other day I did it with irritation and impatience and now I found already by the, by the same day, I wasn't feeling as impatient in situations that used to trigger my impatience or trigger my irritation, right? And I don't want to feel irritated or impatient very often. I just, I, I think they're a waste of my emotional energy. So uh, you can, for extra credit today, try on the and to eliminate an emotion or to reduce your experience of an emotion that you don't want to feel anymore. And we can talk about this more because I squished a big couple of topics together today. If you have any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow and maybe I will do a better example and really write it out and detail it out on how to do the and because I think this that the or and the and for, for experiencing easily the emotions we want to experience and making it almost impossible to experience those we don't want to experience it's such a quick and easy and powerful tool it doesn't take anything you can do it anywhere in your head and instantly feel better all right any questions ask i actually set up direct messaging on this particular facebook live so if you happen to be hearing me live you can comment right here or ask questions here and direct message me otherwise you got to look me up sharon horn all right have an awesome day and i'll of course be with you tomorrow bye